What is up you guys? I am Anthony Metro. Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be giving you my 2020 National League East Division predictions. Before I get started, if you like this video, please be sure to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Anthony Metro MLB. Leading off, and it should come as no surprise to anybody, the Miami Marlins. The Marlins had a wildly disappointing 2019 season. They finished 57 and 105. Of course, everybody expected this. The Marlins are in a full-blown rebuild, coming off the heels of trading superstars Giancarlo Stanton, Christian Yelich, and Marcelo Zuna. Their 57 and 105 record was the worst in the National League. Their offense was far and away the worst in the National League in almost every category that you could think of. I'm talking about runs, average, on-base percentage. Their pitching, however, was another story. Their young pitching is not only on the rise, but it is actually ready to make an impact in 2020 and 2021. I'm talking about guys like Sixto Sanchez, Trevor Rogers, Nick Niedert, Braxton Garrett, and so on. All those guys are top 10 prospects in the Marlins farm system. And Sixto Sanchez and Edward Cabrera are actually within the top 100 prospects in Major League Baseball. And there's a good chance that we're going to see a lot of those names start to fill in and take over a lot of the rotation spots and join the likes of Sandy Alcantara. But while the Marlins pitching prospects made some noise, the offensive prospects were exactly that. Center field prospect Lewis Brinson, who was acquired in the Christian Yellows trade, appears to be on his last leg. This could be a make or break year for him. And Jorge Alfaro, while a defensive stalwart behind the plate, doesn't appear like he'll be much of an offensive threat throughout his career. Isan Diaz is going to be playing second base. He actually looks to be a very good player. I could see him being just a step below All-Star. Not quite there, but a very good MLB player. Meanwhile, the 2020 Marlins will be anchored by veterans across the board in Corey Dickerson, John Birdie, Brian Anderson, Jesus Aguilar, even Matt Kemp was signed to a minor league deal. Those guys might actually be able to keep this offense afloat while the pitching develops. While the Marlins have promising young pitching waiting in the wings, it is going to be another rough year for the Marlins in 2020. They are going to be bad again. They are still in full-blown rebuild mode, and they are going to be willing to trade any of the aforementioned veterans in order to improve their team for the future. Now, I'm not saying to go out and put your money on the Marlins to win the NLEs. I'm going to go ahead and say that the Marlins are actually going to surprise some people. I think they're going to quote-unquote overachieve and prove some of the pundits wrong. My prediction for the 2020 Marlins is 68 and 94 for fifth place in the National League East. An 11 win improvement from their 2019 campaign. What do the Nationals do for an encore? I mean, an absolute miracle run where everything just broke perfectly for them. That was not the case this offseason with superstar free agent Anthony Rendon. The Nats are instead prepared to hand the third base reins over to top prospect Carter Keboom, who is ranked the 20th overall prospect in all of baseball. And while he profiles to be a very good hitter, the Nationals are not going to be getting the elite gold glove defense that his predecessor Rendon supplied. While the Nationals struck out on Anthony Rendon, they did retain Steven Strasburg and added veterans Eric Thames and Starlin Castro to the roster. The biggest questions for the Nationals in 2019. Is their bullpen going to look the way it did in the regular season or in the way it did during their magical run in the playoffs? The second question, and I think this is the most important, how will the big three in the rotation perform and stay healthy after a lengthy postseason run in which they were heavily relied upon? They went to game five of the National League Division Series with the Dodgers. Then they, of course, went all the way to game seven with the Astros before ultimately winning the World Series. Steven Strasburg threw 36 in the third innings. Max Scherzer threw 30 innings and Patrick Corbin threw 23 in the third innings. Patrick Corbin actually pitched in five relief appearances to go with three starts. It's my personal opinion that we're gonna see at least one of those guys go on the injury list for a significant period of time, if not the entirety of the season. Further, Carter Keboom, yes, he's a very highly touted prospect. We've heard his name for a long time, but I do not think he's gonna be prepared to live up to the lofty expectations that Anthony Rendon has set for the Nationals at third base. The bottom line, the Nationals are going to miss Anthony Rendon. I just don't think the Nats are gonna get enough from their aging veterans. I'm talking about Starlin Castro, Eric Thames, Howie Kendrick. This is just a case where I don't believe that the sum of multiple players' projections are going to be equivalent to the presence of a superstar like Rendon. I think the Nationals are going to have a serious World Series and postseason hangover. They had a miracle run where everything happened to just go their way down the stretch in the playoffs, and I don't think they'll be able to repeat that or sustain the health that will be required out of a full 162 game season. For those reasons, I'm going to predict that the Nationals have a wildly disappointing year. My prediction for the Nationals in 2020 is an 82 and 80 record fourth place in the NL East. 
The Philadelphia Phillies came in 2019 with lofty expectations after the signing of Bryce Harper and the acquisition of JT Real Muto. The team, however, did not live up to those expectations, finishing a disappointing 81 and 81 in fourth place. The Phillies, of course, added Zach Wheeler this offseason, as well as shortstop Didi Gregorius. One of the big reasons they did do so poorly last year was because of their starting rotation. It simply didn't live up to the standards. Will Aaron Nola return to his 2018 form, or was that just a blip on the radar? Personally, I think he's somewhere between his 2018 and 2019 campaign. Not quite a star, but a top of the rotation starter nonetheless. Then you have Zach Wheeler, who if he pitches to his ability, is a top of the rotation starter in his own right. After that, things get a little tricky. You have Jake Arrieta, who in his two seasons in Philadelphia has pitched to a 4.26 ERA. Arietta actually exercised an option this offseason knowing that he is underperformed. Then of course there's Zach Eflin and Vince Velasquez who are perennial high four ERA pitchers. The Phillies are going to be better than their 81 and 81 record in 2019. Their lineup one through eight is stacked with great hitters. You have JT Romuto, Andrew McCutcheon, and DD Gregorius who are all professional hitters. You have Bryce Harper and Reese Hoskins who could each pop 40 home runs in that band box of a stadium. And then you sprinkle in a few other guys in Scott Kingery, Adam Hasley, and Gene Segura who all bring their own game. The Phillies may even see the debut of their top prospect, Alec Bohm, a power hitting third baseman. The question mark for the Phillies will ultimately be their starting rotation though. Nola is being relied on to be the number one pitcher in that rotation. Zach Wheeler is an immediate upgrade to their number two in the rotation should he pitch to his potential and Jake Arrieta could round out the top three spots if he again pitches to his career potential. But after them, Eflin and Velazquez underwhelmingly round out the rotation. Like Bohm, the Phillies may get the help of their top pitching prospect in Spencer Howard. If Howard could come in and replace some of Velazquez or Eflin's starts and pitch even halfway to his ceiling, it will mean the Phillies are trending in the right direction. Under new manager Joe Girardi and the addition by subtraction of Gabe Kapler, the Philadelphia Phillies will perform better than they did in 2019. My prediction for the 2020 Phillies is a record of 85 and 77, a four win improvement from 2019. The 2019 Mets at their worst were 13 games under 500. And at their best, they were half a game out of the wild card race in mid-August, winners of 16 of 18 games. Much to do with their awful start was the bullpen. Edwin Diaz, of course, had a meltdown season every step of the way, and Yuri's Familia was not far behind his performance as well. The Mets lost Zach Wheeler this offseason, but figures still have a strong starting rotation with Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard, Steven Matz, Marcus Stroman, and then one of Rick Porcello or Michael Waka. Can Edwin Diaz and Yuri's Familia have bounce back seasons? Yes, the Mets brought in Dellen Patances. He was one of the best relievers on the market. He himself has to stay healthy as well. The Mets will also have to rely on Justin Wilson to continue his success from 2019. The Mets have developed a young offensive core. Pete Alonso, of course, but Michael Conforto and Jeff McNeil each had career seasons. J.D. Davis, Ahmed Rosario, and Dom Smith all had breakout years in their respective roles. And Brandon Nimmo, though he missed almost all of 2019, was coming off a 2018 campaign that saw him have a 404 on base percentage. All six of those guys mentioned are 27 years old or younger. The one thing that the Mets do lack is a time machine, and that's exactly what the Mets need if they want to get rid of Robinson Cano. Unfortunately, I think that Cano's best years are behind him, and we're going to see more sluggish defense, base running, and slow bat speed. But Cano's not the only player on the Mets that will struggle defensively. The Mets as a team in 2019 did not field the ball well. Does Brandon Nimmo have the range to play like a true center fielder? And though they improved as the season progressed, J.D. Davis and Dom Smith are fish out of water in left field. Wilson Ramos's framing, blocking, and throwing arm have always come into question. And are Ahmed Rosario's defensive woes behind him? Or are we going to see the first half Rosario who was a defensive liability? Overall, the Mets have a very good offense, a very strong rotation, and a potentially good bullpen. However, their suspect defense and athletic ability worry me, especially when you factor in a bullpen that is as volatile as they come. Because of that, my prediction for the 2020 Mets is an 89-73 and 73 record, a three-win improvement from 2019. The Atlanta Braves ended up running away with the NL East crown in 2019 with a 97-65 and 65 record for their second straight division title. They dominated the division in head-to-head -head matchups going 46 and 26. The Braves are a well-run organization. They always seem to have a knack for filling their biggest needs heading into the season or at trade deadlines. And the same was true this offseason. They improved their beleaguered bullpen by adding Will Smith, 
retaining Darren O'Day, as well as Chris Martin. The Braves have a solid foundation of young talent all around the field, from Freddie Freeman to Ozzie Albies and Ronald Acuna. And it's only getting better. Now don't get me wrong, the Braves are going to miss Josh Donaldson. There's no doubt about it. It's difficult to replace the kind of production that he had in 2019. But again, like I alluded to earlier in the video, the Braves do a great job of always finding a way to replace their biggest needs. And they did that in the form of Marcel Ozuna late in the offseason this year. Ozuna will be playing left field, coming off a terrific season with the St. Louis Cardinals, and will be highly motivated playing on a one-year contract. Travis Darno re-emerged as an offensive threat with the Rays last year, and he should improve the catching production that the Braves got out of Tyler Flowers, and this should have been retired Brian McCann in 2019. I think the Braves are too well-rounded of a team and with too much young talent knocking on the door to remove them from their perch as NL East champion. My prediction is that the Braves will finish with a 93-69 and record in 2020. And while it is a four-game decrease from their win total in 2019, they will still remain National League East Division champions. So there you guys have it. Those are my predictions for the 2020 National League East. The Braves win their third straight division title. The Mets come in second. Phillies in third. Nationals in fourth. And then the Marlins are going to be in last place once again. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts. Feel free to roast me on the Nationals prediction. I am holding tight on that one. Stay tuned for the other division predictions coming up. The National League Central is coming up next, and that should be out by this Wednesday.